Hey guys, this is Henry from Obedi again. Today we're going to keep working on the Pro Tools Preferences window. This time we're going to be working on our editing tab. So uh, let's say you have already recorded your performance and you're going to start editing. You're going to start slicing things and moving things around. Okay, so before you do that, you want to make sure that you have set up your preferences window, especially the editing tab, correctly. So you have um, one, two, three, four, five, six sections here. First one is a clip section, everything related to clips. You can um, set here tracks, memory locations, fades, zoom, and then undo. Okay, so let's start with the clips. Um, by the way, I'm going to tell you, I typically leave everything from this tab default. I only play with a uh, couple options and we're gonna evaluate those and I'll, I'll let you know. So, um, this first three options from the clips, okay. Uh, clip list selection follows edit section, edit selection. So basically what this means is that if you click on a clip from the clip list and you select it, it's gonna be highlighted on the clip list but also on the edit um, window. The one underneath that does the opposite. If you select it from the edit window, it'll be highlighted and selected from the clip list. So these are like tied to each other. I typically leave those two on. Um, I like that so I know exactly uh, where that clip is within the clip list. Okay. Uh, auto name separated clips. I like that to be on too because when I am, let's say I'm editing and I'm slicing things with this slice tool. As soon as I slice, automatically the the new created clip uh, is going to have another name. Okay, that way I know uh, it's a different clip, and um, that's an obvious way to know that it's been sliced. Okay, now the other three options I leave those uh, unchecked, and that's pretty much a default. Then you have clip gain notch value. Okay, by default this is set to half a dB. You could modify that to make it even larger or smaller. Um, if you're going to be nudging your clip gain, that's fine. I typically just go and do it manually because um, sometimes I might do like 1 dB, maybe 3, maybe 2.8. So I don't really use the clip notch. I just do it manually. Uh, like I'll go to the clip and I'll clip gain it up or down as much as I want. And uh, I'll go exactly to... Um, the the place I want as far as uh, dBs. Okay. Now you also have the one through five number keys control. I have that set to zoom presets. So if I'm pressing the one through five keys, not on my numeric keyboard, but on my regular keyboard, uh, those are related to zoom presets. So let's say one could be a super wide zoom, and then maybe two, it's kind of far away. So you can zoom in and out. Um, and leave those as presets, okay? That's very useful when you are editing. Now, tracks. All of these I typically have off, and that's the default uh, in Pro Tools. New tracks, default to tick time base. I don't want them to be default to tick time base, so that's off. Uh, suppress name dialog when created new playlist. I don't want them to be suppressed. I like to see the name dialog. That way I know it's a new playlist. I know which playlist I'm in. Uh, show target playlist or playlists after sending clip selection. I have that also off. Now memory location. Uh, once again, default uh, auto name memory locations when playing. That's off. And then recall memory location selection at original track. That's on. Now this gets better here. Fades. Um, when you're editing, you're going to be working with a lot of fades. Uh, you're going to be working with fade ins, fade outs. Uh, crossfades and things like that. So uh, one really important one here, quick punch, track punch, crossfade length. So when you're doing a quick punch, when you're punching in into a track and you're recording a part, you're basically creating audio on top of another audio file. So you can set this to create an automatic um, crossfade between the punch in and the punch out areas so when you play back, you don't hear clicks and pops. Now I have this set up to zero, so I'm basically not creating a crossfade uh, when I punch in. And you know, 
there are some programs that will do this automatically. I don't like that to be the case. I typically just create the crossfade myself, and I find that when I do it myself, it actually sounds better because I can adjust maybe a little bit more to the left, maybe a little bit more to the right. Maybe I can play with the length of the crossfade. Uh, sometimes it's actually wider, sometimes it's shorter. So I just leave that at zero. I do like to preserve my fades when editing, so that's on. Uh, auto, ad auto accept, adjust bounce, no, that's off. So it's going to ask me if I want to adjust the bounce, if by some reason I'm trying to uh, create a crossfade that it's out of bounds. Uh, smart tool fade adjustment, always on. I typically leave that like that. So when I'm working with a small, the smart tool and I get close to the start or the end of a clip, the fade adjustment will appear. So on the smart tool, I can trim, I can fade, and move stuff around. And um, uh, you want to make sure that's always on. Otherwise, you will need to. It'll be required to do a command key so the fade adjustment appears on your smart tool. Now, here's another cool thing. You could set uh, default settings for your fade-ins, fade-outs, cross-fades, or rexes. For example, if you do fade-in, right, you could set the fade-in to be, let's say, standard, S-curve, or one of these ones here. And then the slope could be either equal gain or equal power. And then when you set this here, all your fade-ins are going to follow this shape. The same thing with the fade-out. You set the shape of your fade out so that all your fade outs by default follow um, this shape. Same with the crossfades and the same with your Rex auto crossfades. Okay. Then you have some uh, stuff here related to zoom, uh, vertical MIDI zoom set to selection. I leave that all default. I personally do not use a lot of these functions. When I'm zooming in and out, I just use the regular key commands for zooming in and out, like um, R and T for horizontal uh, zoom in and out. Um, and then you have, I guess, I guess you could say the most important part of this window, which is the levels of undo. So let's say you're editing and you committed a mistake. Okay, there's something that you did and you didn't want to do. So how do you uh, undo, you could command Z on a Mac or control Z on a PC and that'll take you basically back in time. It's like getting on a time machine. So you're undoing an operation. Pro Tools will let you do up to 64. That's the maximum levels of undo that Pro Tools can store. And I typically leave, I set this to 64 so I can go back in time 64 times. I could go back in time 64 operations before. Okay, so, um, you know, there's people that use this, let's say, at 32 or 30, maybe 20. But personally, you know, if I can go all the way back to 64, as much as I can, I'll take. So I'll just do 64 there. So that's the editing tab of your preferences window. Uh, follow us for the next tutorials in which we're going to be discussing the other tabs of your preferences window. I hope this was helpful, guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost-effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.